Hey guys and welcome back. In this lesson we're going to learn how to paint the texture of a rock. As you can see the references we've selected are mountain rocks that we'll use as a guide for our sphere. So if you're ready, let's get to it. The brush that I'm going to use is the same I've been using so far. As I always say, you can search online for your own brushes to download, create your own, or adjust the basic ones Photoshop has to offer. Choose one that fits in with your style. The first thing we're going to do is select a brown tone and paint the whole sphere with this. We'll use a couple of different tones, one lighter and one a little bit darker, to create the base of the shadow quickly. Now select a slightly darker reddish colour and start making strokes in the direction we're going to paint the protruding rock. With large strokes apply the shadows that go underneath the rock and then with a lighter colour apply some more light to those upper areas. So gradually in this way we can shape our rocky sphere. We're kind of generating levels with light and shadow and through these the main shapes of the rocks will start to appear. So you need to follow this process until you have the whole sphere. Now with a lighter tone, we need to paint the top part of the sphere with areas of light to emphasise that the light source comes from the top left. It's important to create contrast between the tones to enrich in the painting. With these levels of lights, we can continue creating texture and new layers inside the sphere. The next thing we're going to do is take the tones underneath the protruding rocks, the areas of shadow, and we're going to use them to create cracks all over the sphere. Try so that the strokes make sense and are attractive. You can create as many cracks as you like, but just make sure that they work within the composition. We don't want too few or too many. With the tones we already have in the study, we can create some more parts that go in and out, or we can just strengthen the parts we already have. The more detail we add, the better the final result will be. Now we're going to take a darker tone than the darkest one that we have and with this start painting on the cracks and the areas of shadow with the lowest intensity. We need to add more contrast to the painting so this is the best way to do it. Whenever we add a new light or shadow we need to make sure that it works or we'll have to add more contrast later. For the cracks I'll make the most of this tone to add more contrast. 
We're just adding a little bit of darkness to the cracks to tell them apart from the areas of shadow underneath the rocks that stick out. I'm just going to clean the edges of the rock by erasing some areas just to make it as clear as possible. We need some defined edges, most of all because rock is a material with lots of levels and cuts and we need to reflect that in the painting. Now I'm going to go to the right and add some more detail so the painting isn't so flat. Sketch some parts that go in and out and some more cracks to make it more effective. Finally on the rock I'm going to paint some bumps so it's easier to understand that this material is a rock texture. I'll simply take some slightly darker tones to make a soft gradient on one of the sides. And like this, we can get that bumpy effect. Now we have our rocky sphere. All that's left is to create the final material and then I'll show you how to apply the last touches to the sphere to make them look even better. I hope you're enjoying it and I'll see you for the next lesson.